Welcome to Medicare School Daily, where we help you understand Medicare, save money, avoid mistakes, and above all else, get the most out of your Medicare benefits. Now, today's topic is the four Medicare options for retired federal employees. If you're retired from the federal government, uh, you have benefits that are called Federal Employee Health Benefits, FEHB. All right, and so you have some very unique options uh, uh, that you have to consider as you are retired and Medicare eligible. So let's go through those four different options. Option number one would be to enroll in Medicare Part A only, which is called hospital. Remember, B is medical, which is outpatient. A is hospital, which is pretty much everything inpatient. Now listen, please. If you are watching this video and you are not retired from the federal government or your spouse is not retired from the federal government, you do not have this option. If you are re retiring or already retired, you have to enroll in Medicare A and B. And so I wanna remind you though, what happens if you were to do this, if you took Part A only, uh, remember to pick up Part B, what happens is we have uh, three different opportunities to pick up Medicare Part B. And that is called the initial enrollment period, a special enrollment period, and the general enrollment period. This is the time when we can pick up Medicare Part B. Now the initial enrollment period lasts for seven months. And so let's say we're, we're born in July, okay? So this is our birth month. We have three months before the month we're born and then three months after uh, to pick up Medicare Part B. This is called your initial enrollment period. And this is the en enrollment period that people use when they're retired or getting ready to retire at 65. This is when you have to come in and pick up your Part B. Now, if you're a federal employee, you don't have to do it now. You just can have A only and you can pick up B at a later date. But here's the problem, if I don't do it here, this is called special enrollment period. This means that you kept working after 65. So we're really not talking about that if I don't take it here. Now I have this other enrollment period called general enrollment period. Now the general enrollment period, here's the issue. You can only enroll into B during the first quarter of the year, which is January, February, and March, with coverage beginning on the third quarter of the year, which is what? July 1 of whatever year it is. Okay, so if I don't take it here, I still can come in any year and take it during the general enrollment period. But what happens is for every year I have waited, I didn't take here and every year here I waited. Let's say I wait three years before I pick up B and I've already been retired. That will be a 30% penalty added to your Part B premium. So it is true, the federal government says you can get by with A only, but if you ever wanna pick up B at a later date, you can only do it during the first quarter of the year for the enrollment with coverage beginning uh, July 1, the third quarter. Uh, let's suppose you decide in April you would like to enroll into Part B. Well, what happened? You just missed the enrollment, so you got to wait till next year. And then you enroll the first quarter with coverage beginning July the 1st. And so you are going to pay a penalty. For every year we go without, it's a 10% penalty added to our Part B premium. And I've had several uh, federal employees that we worked with in the past uh, that didn't take at 65 because they didn't need to because they knew they could have A only and then they wanted B at a later date and they had to live with these uh, uh, timeline enrollments and the penalties that are assessed during that time. So think all that through if you decide to have A only, okay? But let's suppose you decide I will take A only. Then that takes us to our second option and that's this. You have the option to enroll in Medicare Parts A and B and then keep your FEHB benefits. Actually, FEHB is a lifetime benefit for you and for your spouse. And so some of you are gonna say, no, I don't wanna have A only, I would like to take A and B. Now, I'm not sure what your premium is for your FEHB, but let's just say it's uh, you know $200 to $400 a month. We know as long as you keep it, you're gonna to have to keep paying uh, that premium. And so if you decide to enroll in A and B, remember B also has a premium. And this year, this is uh, 2020, the B premium is $144.60 a month. If you're on Social Security, they take that out of your check. If you're not, they're gonna bill you for that times three. So it's a quarterly bill. So it's basically $450 every quarter. So we're paying our FEHB premium and we're also gonna to have to pay Medicare for our Part B benefits. Now, when I say 144.60, I just wanna clarify this. As long as, let's say you're a single filer, as long as your income is $87,000 or less, that number is accurate. If you're making above 87,000 as a single person, then that number is gonna be a little bit more. Now, let's suppose that you're a married couple and your income then $174,000 or less, 
that 144 is accurate. If you're above 174, you're going to have to pay more than the 144.60. All right, so that's what happens whenever you enroll in A and B. We got to pay our B and we're going to pay FEHB. Now let's look at the coordination of those benefits. Now, as we get any services, whether they be inpatient or outpatient, doesn't matter, all those bills because we're enrolled in Medicare A and B, now Medicare is going to pay first and your FEHB is going to pay second. And in this scenario here, normally what we see is, as you know, Medicare pays first. It really pays pretty well, but there's usually gaps in coverage. And typically those gaps are going to be picked up 100% by your FEHB plan. All right. Now, just remember, we do have to pay our Part B. So as you look at this, really, it's a financial decision. Now, I'm of the opinion that if you have A only up here, you leave yourself pretty vulnerable by not having B. So I believe that for that $144.60 a month, you pick up a lot of insurance because now FEHB is always going to be the second payer and Medicare is going to pay first. So for $144.60, you just put Medicare in the first payer position. And again, they're going to pay quite well. And whatever uh, FEHB uh, your premium is for that. If you're happy with that premium, then this is really, really, in my opinion, very good insurance. That takes us into our third option, and that would be this. You can make the decision to enroll in A and B. Obviously, we know now B has a premium, 144.60 this year, and then you get a supplemental plan. Now, your FEHB benefit is not a supplemental plan. It is a secondary payer to Medicare. Right? Supplemental plans mean these are the ones that are, that are standardized and regulated by Medicare. And each of those plans have letters, A, B, C, D, F, G, K, L, M, and N. There's 10 different supplemental plans, each of them given a letter based upon the plan that you buy and the coverage that you want. All right? Most people today are getting one of three plans, an F, a G, or an N. And so in this scenario here, what's happening is Medicare is going to be the first payer and they're going to pay all, all bills, whether it's inpatient or outpatient, because remember, we have A and B now, and Medicare is going to pay first, and that supplemental plan, based upon the letter you buy, is going to pay second. If you have an F plan, 100% coverage. If you have a G plan, almost 100% coverage. It pays everything but the B deductible, and then the N, you're going to be responsible for a few more items. But the whole point is, in this scenario here, if you decide to go this direction, it is an option for you, but please take heed to this next statement. That's this. If you choose this number three, notice what's happening. Your FEHB benefits is permanently terminated. In fact, we have to sign a document from OPM that says you understand by going with this option, you're permanently getting rid of your FEHB and you cannot go back and get them again. You terminate those. You have to sign off on that. Now, we work with plenty of people who have done that. They just were not happy with their options with FEHB. They weren't happy with the premiums. And they looked at the normal Medicare market and said, I like that market better than FEHB. So if you decide that, just know you have terminated and you cannot go back on FEHB. All right, so that's option number three. Now let's talk about your fourth and final option, and that is to enroll in Medicare A and B. And instead of getting a supplemental plan like we did up here, what happened? Now we're going to get an Advantage plan. Now these are called replacement plans. They're also called C plans, all right? And when you do this, what's happening is this. Uh, whenever a bill comes through, you're, you as the insured will pay copays because remember, that's what Advantage plans, that's how they work. You always pay copays, all right? And so what's happening here is you pay your copays, and then once that copay is, is satisfied, which could be, you know, maybe $10 to see a doctor, maybe $25, $30 to see a specialist, uh, probably $300 to, to go to the hospital every day, but you pay your copays, and then the balance of that is going to go directly to the Advantage plan, and they're going to pay that balance 100%. They're responsible for all your expenses other than the copays that uh, you have to pay for that scheduled service. All right, now some of you are going to like these kind of things because why? There's a lot of C plans today that has zero premium. Now again, we're enrolled in A and B, so we still got to pay that 144.60 to Medicare B premium, but the C plan usually has no premium and they throw in a lot of benefits for those Advantage plans. And so here's the good news though. Remember up here, if we took a supplemental plan, uh, we had to permanently terminate our FEHB. Not so if you decide to go with the C plan. Here, your FHEB is notice only suspended. That's it. They'll just suspend it. In fact, we fill out a document that says uh, you're taking an Advantage plan and you're suspending your FHB. And then what happens every year during the open enrollment period, if you decide that you want to switch Advantage plans, you can. If you want to get off the Advantage plan and go back into FEHB, you can do that any year during the Medicare open enrollment. And again, unless you're FEHB, folks, what I just said does not apply to anyone else. 
uh, because most people can only do an Advantage plan for one year, and after that, they got to medically qualify to switch, but not if, if AHB. Uh, you have the right to just simply suspend it, and during Medicare open enrollment, you can go right back to FHB and pick up your Blue Cross Blue Shield, your GEHA plan, maybe your Aetna plan, Humana, whoever you had on the federal employee, you can go back to that and then uh, drop your Advantage plan. So these are the options if you're retired from the federal government. And if you decide you'd like to call our company and talk to one of our MedicareSchool.com guides, uh, everyone's well versed in these options. And so we just want to make sure that you're making the best decision for your particular situation. To learn more, watch the related video or check out our most recent video. Also, be sure you click to subscribe for free and get notified every time we post a new video. To watch our complete Medicare workshop, go to MedicareSchool.com. And finally, when you're ready to compare all your insurance options and get free enrollment help from one of our Medicare school guides, call the number on the screen. See you next time.